Hey guys, it's Oksana with Craft and More Design. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel and watching more videos. Stay tuned for more videos. Make sure you subscribe below. That means the world to me. So today I'm going to show you guys how to sublimate using 11 by 17. I'm actually going to be working on pillows for a customer of mine. So she provided the pillows. We went ahead and stapled all the designs that she wanted. So because I'm working with larger pillowcases, I am going to do an 11 by 17 size as that is actually the biggest setting um, for my printer. I could do 13 by 19, that's also an option, but for the project that I'm working on, 11 by 17 is sufficient. So stay tuned, I'll show you guys my finished product. So this is the front portion of it. So this is the larger pillow. And since I'm working with a bunch of different feather options, I felt like it was fitting to wear this little headband. How many of you guys remember when this used to be the style? Their hair would end up becoming like this by the end of the day. So I don't know, maybe we can bring it back, make it look cool again, but anyways. So with the brand that I'm using, it is actually ASAP. So you'll see the ASAP is in the back. Um, so when you load it into your printer, I'm using an Epson 7710. I'm going to load it with the ASAP facing up and make sure you adjust your printer settings, which I will walk you guys through how I did it on my end. I am using Silhouette software. I went ahead and just got my image ready to fit that 11 by 17 format. Make sure you always mirror it so you need to flip it horizontally. And then when you go ahead and send it to your printer, you just need to make sure that your printer settings are correct. So go ahead and go to print page setup and adjust it down to 11 by 17. And then you can go ahead and press print. All right, so now that we have our image printed, um, remember to print it horizontally. I'm just gonna make sure that it fits perfectly onto the fabric that we are working with. A lot of people say you, you should pre-press the fabric just to heat up the fibers of it so um, the image is a little bit more clear or it applies a little bit more easier. But for me, I have tried it both ways and it really doesn't make a difference. So if I can save some time for myself um, as I do run some businesses and I have online shop and a brick and mortar shop, I do. Um, so I'm actually just going to apply it directly onto it and I will show you guys how that looks. I have my printer settings at 365. You can go all the way up to 400 if you would like. I also use um, butcher paper. I bought this roll on Amazon. Um, so I usually buy a huge bulk of it. It lasts a long time. And then I always make sure to have scissors as I cut everything with my scissors. And when I have my image printed, I also cut with scissors. And the reason being is a lot of times when it is printed out, some of the ink can actually be hidden along the edges. So if you look closely, this is a perfect example. Right over here, you see that? Yep, yeah, right there. That is actually black ink. So if I did not cut this around, it would apply permanently onto the fabric, which in this case would be a disaster because this fabric was provided um, to me by the customer that I'm doing this custom order for. So it's not like I can just turn around and go buy myself another fabric sheet. So this is something that I have no room for failure in. So just make sure you cut all around the edges to avoid any, any possible ink that you don't want onto your fabric sheets. So I went ahead and laid my butcher paper down. I have the fabric on top that I'm using. Also, side note, I am redoing my craft room for probably the hundredth time. So my heat press is currently on the floor. Oh, move out of the way. My heat press is currently on the floor. <laughs> 
Anybody else have a dog? Okay, all right. So my heat press is currently on the floor, um, huge no-no, but in the meantime, until my desk arrives, this is what I have to work with. So, um, but I will go ahead and use my transfer um, image that I got reverse. I will lay it down directly onto my fabric. Then I'll go ahead and just cut a transfer um, sheet for the top. Um, 365 to 400 is really my happy medium. So just depending on the thinness or the thickness of my fabric is what I choose to do. So here's that. All right, so now that it is beeping, the image is done. It turned out super pretty. And there you have it. So I hope you guys learned. It's pretty much the same process as eight and a half by 11, but this is just a slightly bigger image. What I'm gonna do on part two is I'm actually gonna show you guys how to apply an image that is much bigger than your printer, like this huge, by breaking up your image into several parts and then applying it onto this gigantic fabric. I am using the same image, so I'm gonna go ahead and just weld it. That way each part is separate and just fit it perfectly onto your screen. So I'm gonna just go ahead and move that feather over. There are some remaining feather pieces, so you can go ahead and just highlight those and move those along with you. Now, another way you can do that is just go ahead and click on group, and that way it kind of separates it a little bit easier, and then you can drag the feather away and work with each part of it individually. And then you can just group it back together and that way it remains in one piece um, just like that. So I showed you guys how to do that 11 by 17 size. Now, a lot of people ask, well, what if I can't do anything bigger than 11 by 17, 13 by 19? My printer is set at that capacity, I can't do anything bigger. Well, when I am working on an image that is gigantic, like this is probably like, I don't know, three feet by three feet or so, take your image at the biggest setting that your printer can print. So in my case, I don't have 13 by 19 paper um, today, so I'm gonna just work with 11 by 17. So I printed out a giant feather, and then I printed out the wording. So this is the same image that we just did for the 11 by 17, but in this case, I printed them both out. So I am working now with a lot bigger of an image. And what you're going to do is you're going to actually have to just kind of play around with the fabric and press at different places until you get the image as big as you can. Now, other options is you can actually print like just half of it all on one page and the other half on another page. I personally don't like doing that. I think it creates a little bit more of a choppy look. So if you don't have to do it and your customer is aware of the sizing that you have to offer, just do your best. And um, in this situation, I would definitely recommend that you use sublimation tape. I actually have a tape dispenser again, but my sublimation tape on Amazon and my dispenser on Amazon, I pretty much buy all sublimation items on Amazon. There we go.
because once you transfer the image onto the fabric, it actually does bleed through onto the sheet. And I have tried it before when you use the same sheet on something else, that heat activates what has bled through and you get that image as well. It, it's a disaster. So um, definitely. Thank you. 